If there is a human equivalent to the supercomputer, it may very well be alive in Paul Dirac. As a 25-year-old British scientist, Dirac helped to establish the field of quantum mechanics, overthrowing the foundations of classical physics. Indeed, his Dirac equation, revealed in 1927, describes the behavior of an electron with almost perfect accuracy and earned him a share of the 1933 Nobel Prize in Physics. He was at Cambridge where he, he held the Lucasian chair of uh, mathematics. Uh, which was the same chair that, that uh, Newton had held. And they have a retirement age in England. He had to retire at age uh, 65, and he didn't want to quit. In 1970, already traveling in the U.S., Dirac is convinced to take a one-year visiting professorship at FSU. He is struck by the sylvan countryside of North Florida, which reminds him of England and the good nature of the faculty at FSU. At the end of the year, Christmas, he had a Christmas party at my house, and uh, he was going to leave uh, between that and the year club. And, and his wife came to me uh, at my house and said, Paul likes it here. Could you arrange something for him to come on a continuing basis rather than a visitor? And of course, See, I, I had only money for this uh, visiting business, you know, for a semester or something like that with NSF. I didn't have money for a, a permanent job. And so I said, well, maybe something can be arranged. In the field of physics, Paul Dirac is a living legend, and his presence is as if a name from the history books has come alive. As Lanuti writes later, Dirac is not a person. Dirac is an equation, a theory of antimatter. Bob Lawton was the Dean of Arts and Sciences. And we, so we went to see Do uh, Bob Lawton, and Lawton, um, uh, Bob Lawton had, was a Shakespeare scholar. And I remember telling him, you know, here he doesn't know anything about who Paul Dirac is. And I said, I said, you know, suppose somebody told you that Shakespeare wanted to come to the university. That's about the extent of it as far as Feather is concerned. Would you be interested? He said, absolutely, of course. <laughs> Three days later, FSU has an offer beginning a 14-year relationship that does as much for Paul Dirac as it does for FSU. In fact, he became more active here than he had been in his last years in Cambridge. In fact, his wife has told me many times he, he reversed his personality. At Cambridge, he worked at home in, a, in an office, a study he had at home, and he would go in to teach his classes and then come back home and stay all the time. At FSU, did the opposite. The period that I'm going to talk about begins in 1925. He took students again. He uh, started lecturing and giving uh, courses again and wrote more books and papers. Uh, just rejuvenated. And he had a grand time here. Dirac remains at FSU until his death in 1984. Laid to rest in Tallahassee, he will forever be part of the rolling countryside that became his second home. Monuments to his FSU contributions include a science library named in his honor and a statue paid for by friends, colleagues, and admirers with whom he came in contact during his time at FSU. Back home, they also remember. In London's Westminster Abbey, a two-foot square tablet recognizes Dirac's place in British history. It rests against the gravestone of Sir Isaac Newton.